Hi students, welcome to Sunil's tutorial. I am Sunil Mirwani and today we will be doing table exercise 5. We are going to do question 9 to question 17. Table exercise 5. Let's see this. They have given you following data for two companies. Price of company A. Price of A is given to you as 60, 64, 74, 80, 76, 70, 60, 50, 60, 70. And then they give you price of B. Price of B is given to you as 22, then 30, 34, then 48, then 72, 62, 84, 120, 124 and 128. Now they have given you the rules of share market. Rules. Right? First they have given you condition 1. Condition. Daily moving average is given by the formula price on n plus 1 day plus price on nth day divided by 2. Then they have given you rule 1. Rule 1 says that if share price is 3%, share price is 3% lower than DMA, then it is sell signal. Right? That's A and the B part of the rule says that if share price is 5% more than DMA, then it is buy signal. Fine. That's rule A. Rule 1. Next, then they give you condition B. It says that relative strength comparison is price of A upon price of B. Next, they have also given you rule 2. Rule 2 says that if relative strength comparison is more than 1.5 then buy B and sell A buy B and sell A and second they said that if relative strength comparison is less than 0 0.5 then buy A sell B Right? Now before I move on to the questions, let's do a certain calculation. First, let's find out daily moving average of A. DMA of share A. Now they are saying that the daily moving average is the price on the nth day plus the price on the nth plus one day divided by two. So that means the price on the first day plus the price on second day divided by two. So that will be 60 plus 64 divided by 2. Now one thing that you have to understand here people is that if I have the price on the second day, that means this has to be the DMA for the second day. So in that case, this is going to be 62. Guys, one of the shortcut method I can tell you is find out the difference, divide the difference by 2 and add to the shorter number, smaller number sorry. So add or subtract depending. 
like 60 and 64, the difference was 4, right? Half of 4 is 2, add it to the smaller number because it's going up. If it was going down, I would have subtracted, right? Like here, 64 to 74, the difference is 10. Half of 10 will be 5. Add 5 to 64, that will give you 69, right? So you could go on solving this way and you will get this answer as 77, 78, 73, 65, 55, 55 and 65. So I found out the daily moving average for A. Same way I can find out the daily moving average for B also. Daily moving average for B. Right? 20 plus 22 divided by 2. So that's going to be 26, 32, 41, 60, 67, 73, 102, 122, 126. Fine. Now, they've also asked me to say, let's look at rule 1. If the share price is 3% lower than DMA. Now, if I take 3% lower than DMA, then that means that will be 97%. So let's find out 97% of DMA. 97% of 62, right? 97% of 62 will be 60.14. Same way, go on doing 97% of all the figures, which will be this will be nothing but 66.93. 74.69, 75.66, Then you have 53.35, 53.35, and 63.05. Same way I can find out 97% of DMA for B also. 97% of DMA. If I do 97% of DMA, I will get this as 25.22, then 31.04, then you have, for, uh, this is going to be 39.77. how will we find out 97% without the calci in the examination hall? Guys, your DMA is 62 rupees, right? 1% is 0.62, 3% will be 0.62 multiplied by 3, right? Subtract that figure from 62, you will get your 97%. Can you repeat that? See, 62, right? 1% of this will be 0.62, how do I get 1% divided by 100? Multiply by 3, 3 to the 6, 6 3 the 18. Subtract from the original number, DMA. 62 minus 1.86 will give you 97%. So you wouldn't actually need a calcium. Right, you get the same thing? Same way. Now, let's see rule 2. Rule 1, B section. If the price is 5% greater than DMA, 5% greater than DMA, that means 100 plus 5 percent will be 105 percent, right? So let's find out 105 percent of DMA. So how will I do that? Guys, 62, 1 percent is 0 0.62, 5 percent will be 0 0.62 into 5, add that to 62, that will give you 105 percent. So 105 percent Let's see, as I need it, I'll calculate, I've done this calculation for 105% of DMA. 
then for B, let's see for B first, this is going to be 27.3, then 63, 70.35, 76.65, 107.1, then 120, 107, 128.1, then you have 132.3. Let's also find out the relative strength index. Right? For rule 2, I need to find out the relative strength comparison. Relative strength comparison is price of A divided by price of B. So that means 60 divided by 22. So in that case that will be 2.72. Then you have 64 divided by 30. 64 divided by 30 is 2.13. Next 2 2.17, 1.66, 1.05, 1.02, 0.71, 0.48, 0.54, right? Now that I have this much data, let's see if I can solve the questions based on this, right? Question 9. How many cell signals, how many cell signals were there for A? How many cell signals were there for A using rule 1? Use rule 1. Now rule 1 says that if the share price is 3% lower than the DMA, right? If the share price is 3% lower than the DMA, that means if you have the price is Share price is 64. If it is less than 97% of DMA, then that means it is a sell signal. So here look at this. This is 64 and uh, you have this as 60. 74 no, 80 no, 76 no, 70 yes. 70 is less than 7.81. So on day 6 I have a sell signal. 60 is less than 63.05. So I have a sell signal here. I have a cell signal here, no and no. So I have three cell signals. I have a cell signal on day 6, day 7 and day 8. Right? So I can say that cell signal on day 6, 7 and 8. So three cell signals. Question 10. How many buy signals are there using rule 1 for B? How many buy signals were there for B use rule 1? Right? Now, let's see this. Using rule 1, the price of B is 30. Now the Rule 1 says that if the price of the share is 5% greater than uh, is 5% if the share price is 5% higher than the DMA then it's a buy signal. That means if this is more than 105% then it's a buy signal. So straight away 30 is greater than 27 so it's a buy signal. 34 is greater than 33 buy signal. 48 is greater than 43 buy signal. 72 is greater than 63. Buy signal? No, not here. 84 is greater than 76. Buy signal? Right? Then 120 is greater than uh, 107. Buy signal? Not here. Not here. So I have a buy signal on. <coughs> on days 
on the second they are in a buy signal third they are have a buy signal fourth they are have a buy signal fifth they are also have a buy signal then 62 no then on the uh, seventh and the eighth day i have a buy signal right so 1 2 3 4 5 the number of buy signals second third fourth fifth second third fourth fifth seven eight six six right so six buy signals right next let's see question number 11 Question eleven says DMA of A on day seven. DMA of A on day seven. You already calculated this. DMA of uh, A on day seven is sixty-five. Right. Next, let's see question number twelve. Question twelve. Question twelve. R S C on day ten. R S C on day ten. Right. R S C on day ten is zero point five four. Next, we will ask you. When was their first buy signal for A according to rule two? When was there? First buy signal. First buy signal for A according to Rule Two. Right. First buy signal for A according to Rule Two. Now buy signal for A is. When the RSE is less than 0.5, rule two says that you will buy A when the RSE is less than 0.5. Now the RSE becomes less than 0.5 first time on the eighth day. So when was there a first buy signal for A according to rule two on day eight? Buy A when RSE is less than 0.5. RSC is 0.41 on day eight. Therefore, first buy signal on day eight. Next question 14. When was their first sell signal for A according to rule two? When first sell signal. For A by rule two. Now rule two says that you will sell A when RSC is greater than one point five. On the first day only the RSC is greater than one point five. Sell A when RSC is greater than one point five. RSC is 2.72 on day one. So first sell signal on day one. Next, let's see question 15. You bought thousand shares of A on day three. Bought thousand shares. Of A on day three, right? And sold on day five. Sold on day five, right? Used the entire amount to buy A on day nine. Used entire amount to buy A on day nine. And sold on day ten. Right? 
their profit is profit is now let's see this what thousand shares of a on day 3 right thousand shares of a on day 3 is going to give you 3000 rupees thousand shares of a on day 3 wait on day 3 price of a is 74 sorry on day 3 price of a is 74 so this is going to give you 74000 rupees right then sold on day 5 thousand shares sold of a sold on day 5 of a sold day 5 Now on day five, price of A is seventy six rupees. That means you must have got seventy six thousand seventy six rupees per share. So seventy six thousand. Next, they have said that use the entire amount to buy A on day nine. Number of shares of A purchased on day nine. I had seventy six thousand rupees, and on day nine the price of share was sixty rupees per share. That means I must have purchased one thousand two hundred and sixty seven shares. When I divide the two, one share for sixty rupees. So in seventy six thousand I must have purchased one thousand two hundred and sixty seven shares. Sold on day ten. Sold one two six seven shares. On day ten, right? So one two six seven. On day ten, the price was seventy rupees, right? So in which case I must have got eighty eight thousand six ninety, right? Now on day three, I started with seventy four thousand. On day ten, I ended with eighty eight thousand six ninety. That means how much is the profit that I have made? The profit is going to be equal to profit is eighty eight thousand six ninety minus seventy four thousand, right? Eighty eight thousand six ninety minus seventy four thousand. So I should get a profit of approximately fourteen thousand seven hundred rupees. So in that entire transaction, I've gained fourteen thousand, right? Approximately fourteen thousand seven hundred rupees. Next question sixteen. What thousand shares of A for thousand shares of A at rupees thirty and sold them? And sold them when rule two first triggered. When rule two first triggered, sell A signal. And what B? And sold B on tenth day. Sold B on tenth day. Therefore, profit is how much? Now, bought thousand shares of A at thirty rupees. Thousand shares on day zero. At thirty rupees. So that will be thirty thousand rupees, right? Sold them when rule two first triggered. Now rule two says that you sell A if RSE is greater than one point five. RSE is greater than one point five on day one only. So sold A on day one when RSE was equal to two point seven two. So I had. Thousand shares 
on day one the price of A was sixty rupees. So I must have got sixty thousand rupees, right? Then I bought B. I bought B on day one. Therefore, number of shares of B that were purchased. I had sixty thousand rupees, and with sixty thousand rupees, each share was for twenty-two rupees. So these are the number of shares I must have purchased. Sixty thousand divided by twenty-two, right? Sold B on day ten, right? Sixty thousand upon twenty-two. These were the number of shares I had on day ten. The price of B was one twenty-eight rupees. Right? Do we get this thing clear? So in that case, when I do this, this should come to three lakh forty-nine thousand zero nine zero. Right? Profit is selling price minus initial cost price. I initially started with thirty thousand rupees. So that's three one nine zero nine zero. The profit in the entire transaction is three lakh nineteen thousand ninety. Right? Next question seventeen. When was the first sell signal? When was the first sell signal for B triggered using rule one? Right, sell. Uh, you will sell if the price is less than three percent of DMA. So the price of B should be less than three percent. Right? Here, look at this. Thirty. We want for B, na? Thirty is greater than twenty-five. Thirty-four is greater than thirty-one. Forty-eight is greater. Seventy-two is greater. Sixty-two is not greater. So the first sell signal was 64 is not greater than 60, 62. Yeah. 62 is less than 64.99. So sell B on day six. So the first sell signal for B was triggered on day six, right? Okay, we'll stop this here for the day. Thank you very much.